HR head in various organizations such as National Stock Exchange and other startup IT organizations. In her current profile, she is instrumental in streamlining new policies and processes across the sectors like focus on organizational design and restructuring, focus on talent map movement, focus on building talent pipeline with focus on the young talent. With this, please welcome Ms. Chandra with a huge round of applause. Good afternoon. Sorry, I don't have a very interesting presentation. So you will have to make do with, uh, you know, just a podium session from me. I think uh, the topic to me is very interesting and I think I am preaching to, you know, a room of converts already. So I don't think uh, I need to say much on the topic. The only uh, thing what I have seen is uh, most of us here are uh, in high Kanisha. So I think most of us here are, uh, you know, uh, we have seen a lot of AI technology in learning and, uh, you know, sometimes I feel do we really need that much, you know, there is YouTube and how many of us really go into YouTube and, you know, look at all the learning courses which are there and why is that not happening? I think first of all it is the interest, you know, and all of you will agree. That if a person has interest, then uh, as uh, my colleague Manish mentioned that, you know, sometimes the learning does not stick. But why? That is because, you know, we are many of times in organizations, we are pushed into learning. You know, or it is something which the HR is chasing, you know, okay, there are certain e-learning hours that have to be fulfilled and we, you know, take in reluctant learners. And then obviously that kind of learning will not stick. So today, just I, I think I am just going to reiterate all the knowledge which is already there in this room. But still, you know, it kind of just to bring it all into focus that what is this self-directed learning? Why is it important? Why does it work and why doesn't it work in certain uh, scenarios? So I think first of all, let us see what are the advantages to an organization. If we have self-directed learners around. What we will have is a ready pool of talent and successors for critical roles that all of you will agree. We will have the ability to go into new products and geographies. You know, it's a VUCA world. In a VUCA world, what do you want? You want learners all around. You know, so the ability to go into new geographies, new products. We have to manage with lesser resources and we need multitaskers. So we need to have the flexibility of moving people, let's say, from one department to the other, from one function to the other. So these are the advantages of self-directed learners to an organization. Teams can work with lesser supervision. So we don't need, you know, supervisors guiding and if everybody is a learning organization. Of course, we get to beat the competition quicker. And then what happens is, obviously, the business will have you know, better ability to handle business cycles. There will be stronger team relationships because learners learn from each other. So they build stronger teams. There's a, uh, you know, possibility of the businesses, uh, you know, coming back quickly out of a uh, rough business cycle, which we have seen in, see, COVID, I think, has been a big teacher. You know, some organizations have, uh, you know, jumped out of COVID and some have Actually, you know, there is a big hotel close to this one, the Hayat. You know, we used to have these huge programs, I think Manish also will remember. And today it is closed. What happened? Covid happened. But if you go deep down, I think it, learning did not happen in that organization. So, you know, self-directed learning, it will build confidence in the team and it builds an organization driven to excellence. What are the advantages for an individual? I think I don't need to reiterate today. We have seen large organizations, you know, uh, Amazons of the world, uh, Metas of the world, Googles of the world are downsizing. But what happens to uh, self-directed learners? I, I don't think they get downsized or even if they do, they don't wait on the bench for long. They immediately get jobs again. So, self-directed learners always remain on the cutting edge. There is no fear of redundancy. 
they have the ability to face all kinds of challenges ups and downs they are ready for change new opportunity so what about us are we self directed learners are we ready for new challenges you know many of us will be in hr and we feel okay this ai thing this uh, machine learning thing is something you know if we bury our heads in the sand it will go over us but we need to embrace the change which is happening around us also as hr professionals also learners are able to avoid boredom today many young youngsters if you ask them how is your job i am bored why why are you bored because you are not learning new things you are not curious so i think learners are never bored they always remain relevant they build their own self confidence i think some of the most self confident people in your team will be people who are learning continuously they have the attitude to face adversity and i think today's business cycles are mainly about ups and downs we know what is happening today in in the stock markets in the banking universe i'm sure uh, there are many people feeling you know what will happen tomorrow here i mean people who have got solid jobs in maybe the financial sector are worried that you know is it my chance tomorrow you know also learners are very sought after team members managers will always reach out to them now the interesting thing is that we have seen what is the benefits to an organization what are the benefits to the learners but how to build this kind of a culture or what does such a culture of self directed learning comprise of so first of all such kind of a culture is innovative there is no fear of failure there is a trying culture so it is experimenting it's continuously experimenting openness to new ideas they are non critical you know there is no fear of failure in such a culture non hierarchical team structures learn better create a better we are always looking at hierarchies and at the most what we do we take out one layer and that is why you know today we have the middle management uh, getting delayed in organization but are we looking at a team approach you know do we do we build teams do we know to work in teams do we know to deliver projects in teams learners such kind of a culture they question authority and there is a positive encouraging environment there these are flatter and leaner organizations and managers are coaches and mentors and they are also interestingly a diverse and inclusive culture today i think all organizations we are talking about dni but actually it is a learning culture which leads to a dni culture what are the steps to building such a culture first of all i think providing employees facilities and opportunities and incentives to learn continuously i saw some of the presentations very very fascinating you know make those uh, pro, uh, make those opportunities available to all your team members to learn in any way they want if for them you know actually reading a book helps them to learn vis-a-vis -vis having conversations with each other in teams you know or they want to just uh, set up a computer and you know go into an e learning mode and learn something which they are curious about again this again i strongly believe building a coaching and mentoring muscles in our managers because finally the younger generation coming into organizations will know more than the managers who are there so what is the contribution of the managers so i think maybe the young generation doesn't know what to do with all the knowledge that they have or with the uh, with the knowledge they have of where to go to seek the information that's where mentoring coaching will uh, come into effect again building team structures instead of hierarchical structures celebrating failures you know this this i think is organizations pay the maximum lip service to celebrating failures because i think after one celebration nobody will come to that uh, cake cutting where another failure is being celebrated okay so so i think that culture you have to keep at it as leaders i think culture is an element we have to keep on hitting at that no here we celebrate failures we encourage people to tell stories about what they have learned from you know the last mistake they have done 
Also, when was the last mistake that you do? Really fail big. I ask people in interviews that, you know, gives them very interesting insights on is the person very apologetic? Is the person not trying out new things? You know, so let's encourage failures. Encouraging diversity in teams. If you have two people saying the same thing, thinking the same thing, you don't need one of them. So how diverse are our teams? Again, I've seen more and more leaders, they don't really feel comfortable. You know, they, they don't want to work with people who are, you know, questioning them or who are not aligned with them. So let us look at how, how diverse are our teams. Encouraging the speak up culture. Many a times we have seen in meetings, the leader walks in and then says something. And then says, okay, now you all say. Who is going to say? Whatever has to be said has been said already. And it's not, not about leaders. It is about us. We are all leaders. So let our team speak and then we speak. You know, so speak up culture should be there. Policy flexibility today very important. I think we, we have a lot of debate around hybrid, you know, come back, or everybody is back to office, etc. I think the debate should be around flexibility. There might be many people who would like to, uh, you know, work from office all the time. So, so let us talk about flexibility. Let us talk about respect for the learner. No cookie cutter approach. Sometimes even e-learning, we get into a cookie cutter. Everybody has to do this program. Everybody has to do it within this particular time. I think we as learning professionals have to encourage people. Let them then become self-directed learners. And I think that is a very important role for managers. And we as HR professionals have to get managers who encourage learners. Again, uh, things like recognition for learners. I don't think I need to reiterate the growth mindset versus fixed mindset. We need to have managers who have growth mindset and learners who have growth mindset. Okay, today I have not been able to do it. Doesn't matter, tomorrow I won't be able. That should be the mindset in our organizations. What are some of the things that will impede the development of such a culture? I think it is just the opposite of uh, what I have just now discussed. Where you have lack of diversity in teams, you have the same uh, profile of the people around you. You have a very hierarchical management where you know everything goes through the chain and then comes back through the chain. There is no discussion across teams and functions. New ideas are frowned upon not done here, not discovered here kind of uh, tone. Need to be first time right. And you know, sometimes managers in the sake of safety say, no, no, we can't let a young trainee try this out on the shop floor. You know how critical our operation is. You know, how, how risky it is. I think these are excuses. We are not creating the right environment for them to try out. We should not have a first time right culture. Again, fixed mindset. Managers have seen this very quickly. Can you imagine, I am bringing the brightest engineers after a long search, I am bringing the brightest engineers into the shop floor and within a period of two months, three months, this fellow is no good. How is that happening? How is, can a manager come to this kind of a conclusion? There has been a panels of interviews, there has been a process, there has been written assessments. And in two months you are saying he is no good and you are actually telling him or her that, you know, you are no good, you are, uh, you know, you, you should do whatever, get into some non-technical, do your management, etc. You are no good as an engineer. Why are we saying this? These are coming from fixed mindsets. Performance goals, KPIs are given precedence over learning goals. I think this continues to be the bane in all of our organizations. We have, let's say, maximum 10 goals. Out of those 10 goals, you can imagine there will be no learning goal. Okay, so, so let us start encouraging learning goals in our teams. Asking for help is not encouraged. I have seen the biggest failure people have is they don't ask for help in the team. They feel that I am a misfit or the manager feels, why is he going around asking for help? Doesn't he know anything? So these are some of the challenges which are there in, in organization cultures which will prevent us from 
doing any uh, self directed learning again cross team working is not prevalent you know sometimes you feel lot more work is getting uh, you know done uh, during the lunch hour then actually in the office uh, you know hours because in lunch hour at least people are relaxing going across and sitting with other teams and you know talking a little bit and they get some ideas so i think self directed learning cultures are basically idea generation and people who are very much you know keeping the, those focus areas in mind so with that i think again i'm i'm preaching to a room of converted i think all of you know that we can have the best technologies the best ais in the world but if people are not interested they don't see it, what is in it for them i think the best uh, learning initiatives will fail and all of us as learning professionals manish is one of them here will get frustrated you know that uh, why what am i doing i'm just chasing kpis like you know number of learners etc but what is the real impact which is happening so with that i thank you for your time and attention and uh, if there are one or two questions i can take it hello uh thank you chandra i really appreciate the way uh you actually told things with example and i really love them you know being up uh, so let's say grasim uh i'm not sure when grasim was founded uh you can consider us uh grasim maybe 12 12 years back or 15 30 years back right so 12 year old grasim now the management is actually hustling to find out the way to change the mindset right top leaders and uh, then change uh, the culture culture is definitely not a recipe that hr can cook and then just get ready right so how do you suggest or uh, what do you think we as hr needs to do to bring that mindset change uh, in the leadership team specifically Uh, more than uh, than than ground level or mid level management that's what i would want to know your opinion on thank you no i think it's a very good question actually uh, what i have seen is that uh, mindset change and culture change is basically a lot of hard work and it is an intense process and you have to keep at it you, it is very much easier to just put an lms and drive uh, people's uh, learning hours and that is a success it is necessary i am not saying that it is a waste of time from hr that is a success it comes easily but sometimes i have seen hr today is doing many things and there is a fatigue which comes in so with that fatigue because you are you are uh, you know working with the lms partners most of the implementation itself takes a lot of time then okay you get some implementation done then you get the e learnings uh, you know into the lms and then you have a complete fatigue and then you are just chasing the numbers because management is saying we have invested in the lms where are your learning hours but mindset change actually is something that we have to work with our top management with our senior management and recognize what are the gaps we have in our culture today recognize that in our culture we are not encouraging failure recognize that our managers are not coaches and mentors so once we recognize that we have to put in the initiatives around those including maybe having manager krs you know putting those uh, performance plans so hr you know we we are sometimes we work in isolation learning management is working in isolation of performance management you as a performance and management people they say no no we are all about kpis don't bring your learning soft aspects into this don't bring coaches and mentors managers are being trained to be coaches and mentors but they are not really being recognized for being good coaches still the person who goes to the market and gets you the result is the person who is so there are many subtle things which are happening and people see that people say my manager is a very good coach or mentor but he is not recognized which is so and so is 
just says go out and get me the business and he or she is recognized so welcome to the world of hard work as hr professional that's all i must say thank you ma'am